Hi everyone! In this video, we will provide you with a walkthrough of the Smart Pixelator app. If you have not yet downloaded the app, you may want to search for the Smart Pixelator app in your app store and install it now. If you do not have a Smart Pixelator device, you will not be able to use this app. To find out where you can purchase a Smart Pixelator, visit www.smartpixelator.com. All of our apps are COPPA compliant and safe for use by kids of all ages. The first screen here tells us that we can either plug in the AC adapter which came with the device for power, or you may use 4C batteries to power the device. To see how to install the batteries, click on the magnifying glass icon. Also note that there is a Help button throughout the tutorial, which if tapped, will take you to an FAQ page. Once your chosen power supply is set up, Tap the white right-facing arrow to go to the next step. You may also skip this tutorial by tapping Skip in the bottom right corner of your screen, but let's continue with the tutorial. This screen tells us to gently insert the SD card into the back of the Smart Pixelator device, making sure the flat part of the SD card is facing upwards. Once done, let's move to the next step. This step of the tutorial shows us how to place the organizer tray. Let's do that now and go to the next step. Here, simply power up the Smart Pixelator device and tap Continue. Now we see a screen that prompts us to give permission for the Smart Pixelator device and app to communicate with each other. Make sure Bluetooth and location are turned on from your phone or tablet and tap Continue. If either Bluetooth or location are not enabled from your phone or tablet, you will be prompted to turn them on. Now, tap on OK to give permission. Now your phone or tablet will connect to your smart pixelator device. Once Bluetooth is paired, you will be prompted to create a Flycatcher ID, which is basically an account that keeps your preferences saved. Enter your first name, last name, email address, and create a password. Again, this should be done by an adult on behalf of their child. We also recommend opting in to receive periodic news from us here at Flycatcher. Once you've filled in the required fields, tap Next. You will now be prompted to answer a simple math problem to ensure age compliance. Now you are asked a few questions about the person who will be using the Smart Pixelator device. Please note you will be able to set up more than one user. Let's go ahead and fill this out and tap Next. OK, now let's choose an avatar for the user you just set up. In this step, select all the categories which you believe your child would enjoy. You just set up your first user. See here that you can add another user if you like. For now, we are all set. Tap Let's Start to continue. Now, the app will download the models on the SD card you currently have inserted into the Smart Pixelator device. This is a one-time process and will only need to be done if you insert a different SD card. Congrats! You just completed the new user login process. Let's start having fun with the app. In the center and horizontally laid out on your device, you will see all the types of Smart Pixel activities which you can select from and that are related to the SD card you currently have in your Smart Pixelator device. To scroll through the activity types, just swipe left or right. Let's take a look at each type of activity, starting from the left. The first one on the left is PEGS. We can see that there are nine PEG activities currently available. Let's check them out by tapping on the PEGS home screen menu. Here we see a few things. First, we can see the various PEG activity by swiping through. Also, we see that each activity calls out an estimated amount of time to complete the activity, the number of trays and number of pegs needed to complete the activity. Let's tap on the bird pegs activity. Okay, 
This screen tells us exactly how many of each color smart pixel pegs we will need for this activity. It is recommended that you organize the pegs and colors at this stage of the activity. Once you have your pegs ready to go, tap the start button. The first image we see is the completed activity, in this case, the bird we selected. Now, to start the activity, we can tap the right arrow button on the app. This shows us our first step. Tap the right arrow again and we are shown the next step, and the next, and so on. To reshow the most recent step, simply tap the star button. When you reach the last step in an activity, a green check mark will appear. Once you complete the activity, tap on it. Then tap continue and then tap the back button to go back to the home screen of the app. The same app logic applies to the sequence category. Let's head back to the home screen. Tap the back button to go to the home screen of the app. In the beads category, you will notice that there are three different levels of difficulty. Beginners, advanced, and professional. We strongly advise that new users who are not experienced with bead crafting start with the beginner category. Beginner bead activities use less than one full bead tray per activity. Let's take a look at advanced bead activities. These activities use the entire bead tray and therefore take about one and a half hours to complete. The last bead category is professional and this is for the experienced user as it requires multiple trays and a significant amount of time. Let's go back to the home screen of the app. Now, let's check out the 3D beads category. Again, we see the same three levels of difficulty, but note that the 3D beads category in general is more advanced than the regular beads category. Okay, back to the home screen. The last category of activities is the bracelet category. Back to the home screen. On the bottom of the home screen, you will see a camera icon. This is where you go to create your own personal activities. Let's tap on the camera icon now. Now, the first screen you see prompts you to select a layout. In other words, how would you like your activity oriented, and how large? Notice how the app tells us the estimated amount of time per layout and amount of parts. Please note that if you select the square artwork, you may then select whether you want to work with beads, sequins, or pegs. For all other layouts, beads will be used since they require multiple trays. You can switch between regular or selfie camera here flash or no flash. If you want to upload an image from your gallery, tap on the image icon. You will be prompted to allow access to your photo library, which you can allow in the setting menu. Let's now go over the two types of images you can use. Select an image from your photo library. Once you select an image, you may pan it around or zoom in or out to fit what you want into the preview window. You may do some manual color corrections, like so. Once you are happy with the image, tap on the green check mark and you will see the image displayed on your smart pixelator device. Let's head back to the home screen and tap on the My Stuff Heart icon. You will see that the image we created is saved here. To project this image again to your smart pixelator device, simply tap on it. You may also delete unwanted saved images by tapping on the pencil icon and selected any unwanted images and then tapping the pink trash can icon. Before we wrap up this video, let's head back to the home screen and check out the settings menu. To open the settings menu, tap and drag the gear icon to the right. Let's look at the general setting first. Here you can adjust the volume and animation speed, allow photo library access to use your photos to create activities, make it so that activity tutorials always play at the beginning of every activity, allow use of cellular data when downloading models from the SD card, the default here allows for cellular data, language selection, disconnecting from the smart pixelator device.
Now, under Account, you can tap on Account Details. Here you can see your details, opt in or out of Flycatcher News emails, log out from your account, and delete your account. Going back from Account Details, you see an option to change password if necessary. The last section of the Settings menu is Support and Information. Here you can send us your feedback, which we love receiving. You can also check out our privacy policy as well as terms of service. That's it! We hope you enjoyed our walkthrough of the Smart Pixelator app. Make sure to check out our other videos to learn more. Happy pixelating!